almost, almost there, Luke. Right, right there, right there. Okay. Uh, Woo. It's looking good out here. Uh, well, you know what? It takes a real men to move a fireplace like let's that, guys. Good let's, job. Let's, let's get some more pillows on here. We're getting there. You guys are starting to get the idea of finishing touches, but I think we could go a little bit further. The the plants are good, plants? but we need a little more to really make it a home. What do, what do you think about adding a throw rug out here? I think a rug would be great. What about something for the table? Anyone have any ideas? Sure, I'll add some candles. Oh, wait, a great. fire table. How's that? Oh, that would be really great. Get some fire feature. There. What about yep. some tiki torches? Oh, my goodness. That yes. would help a lot. Yeah, we really just need a little bit more to add our little bit of sparkle and finishing on it. Yeah, we're not, oh, we're getting close to being done. Lonnie, yeah. um, Kayla said that um, either when we get old, go bold on these pillows. What does that mean? Uh, I think it's better than mold. I'm oh. not sure, though. I'm not okay. sure. Well, let's get some more, Lonnie. Alright, let's see it. I want to see what you got here. He's fast. Wow. Alright, that's oh, wait, impressive. Wait, so we've been working, you've been practicing this. Yeah, yeah. You know, this we got a skill. show to do, guys. We need to get started. All right, right, Welcome to Between the Studs. I'm Lonnie Norris, and this is part of the Granite Ridge Builders custom team, including Tony Ranke, our president. We build custom homes in northern Indiana, northwest Ohio, and also parts of southern Michigan. We enjoy sharing with you all the many facets the things it takes to build a custom home in your neighborhood or one of ours. I think today's pretty going to be an exciting day. What are we, what are we it doing? It really is. You know, for the last several months, we've been talking about process. And we've got then concrete, we've talked about framing, insulation, drywall. Well, one of the, probably the most important features is the finished product and the finished things that we can be doing. It definitely is. You know, one of my favorites, it can be as little as door hardware or as much as some cabinet special features. The finishing touches make the home. I love the exterior appointments on a home. Things like gable struts or gable brackets or the shakes that we're using. All those many things that really are like a cosmetic really add to the, make that home pop. Well, I love kitchens. So a great finishing feature would be your backsplash. You can add a lot of yeah. wow for Speak, a little bit of money. Speaking of kitchens, right behind us, we're going to be putting a grill. I love the exterior as far as the outdoor living. That's still been one of my favorite finish touches. Tony, I love some of the technology we can incorporate into the home after it's completed. Sure. Stay tuned to see some of that later today. Yeah. You know, guys, what I love is the outside, the getting the yard in and putting a good landscape package in. It can really make or break the outside sure. of the house. Oh, yeah. yeah. One of my favorite things is you can just add a couple dollars and you can do like mirror mates. Frame in those mirrors in the bathroom. It really changes the entire look of it. Okay, well, stay tuned. I think we've got some really fun features for them to look at. So, guys, let's take a pick one and right. start. I'm going to go pick the one over here. This is oh, that's really awesome. good. Yeah. You know, when you consider finishing touches, you have to think about the kitchen because you have many things you can do in the kitchen to make that kitchen unique and to really stand out and pop. Well, there's a lot of great ideas. For example, here we have a breakfast bar, what is, which is in a lot of kitchens. Mm -hmm. This is a raised bar, and this one's really unique because it's glass. Right. We're doing a lot of uh, quartz countertops, granite countertops, laminate. When it comes to those, there's a lot of edges to choose from, and this really can add a lot of dimension and interest to your kitchen. You're right, Elizabeth, and only for a few hundred dollars, you can change that edge to make things really unique and different. And then on the back of your breakfast bar or your island, here we've done glass block. We're doing a lot of brick backs, mm -hmm. and people are using brick throughout their home as other accents. We're doing manufactured stone, and there's other things you can do. We're as also well. using beadboard, which is very, very popular now with that craftsman look, particularly. That's a great look. Another great idea is when you take that island, you could do a different wood. Maybe your perimeter is a painted maple. You could do a stained island, and that really add some pop. And also, you could change the countertop. Maybe put granite only on that island or peninsula, for example really unique ideas that don't cost a lot of money that can make that kitchen stand out. Great finishing touch opportunities in the kitchen. There are, and don't forget the furniture though. You You're can right. add some color. Here we've added some red uh, seating and really add some punch. Love it.
think every client at Grant Ridge Builders really wants us to talk about the kitchen. That's where you spend the majority of your time. These gourmet kitchens have become so popular, there's almost two people cooking in the kitchen now as opposed to one traditionally. Let's talk about some of the features in this one behind us. All right, well, some of the fun finishing features that we like to talk about here, I tend to start with color. When it comes to the islands, have a little bit of fun or even your range hood surround, dress it up a little bit and put your accent and pop and that'll really make a statement. Some other things to think about when finishing off the kitchen is your island. You can do double deep islands. We could do something with a little bit of beadboard, a little bit of extra accent and paneling. You of applied moldings. You know, the other thing we're doing with islands is we're even putting second sinks in. If you have a sink around the perimeter of the, the kitchen, you want that salad sink or that chef sink, because like you said, there are two people in the kitchen now. We're also building a lot of storage into those islands. So we're doing two sets of cabinets. We're even doing bookshelves on the end for additional storage. Exactly. Some other things to think about with your kitchen would definitely be the lighting. Don't forget about above cabinet lighting and under cabinet lighting to really play off all of your special features. And we always recommend you do LED bulbs in those just so you don't to mess with changing those out very often. Exactly. You know, behind us here, we also have a wood hood. Those are really popular right now. You can get them as low as $900 for something simple or something like this one here. It could be $1,500. Just depends on how you dress it up. But you could do mantle styles on them and you can make it more missioned for a little bit more of a contemporary look. Yeah, and if they don't like the wood look, they can always go stainless steel as well. Exactly. You know, really play off of your appliances. Appliances are so important and those are really an accent in the finishing features. It's not really just a utilitarian thing anymore. People are making them a lot dressier and a lot more of a showpiece. And with the cabinets behind us, you've noticed they've done some staggered height, they've done some ins and outs, and then they've done some really, really decorative dentil molding behind us. Yeah, don't forget to play off with your crown molding and add a little bit of features like the wine rack that we have here as well. That creates a little bit of interest. You can do some glass doors, some open doors, and what's really popular right now are some floating shelves. For a lot of folks that are in homes that don't have large pantries like we're building now, you can even do something like that appliance garage for a couple hundred bucks, get some additional built-in storage and hide those pieces that you don't want sticking out on your countertop. The last item, don't forget about hardware. The hardware actually makes a really big statement on your cabinets and tells the story of what your home style is. So take a look at that and have a lot of fun. Old is new again, and talking about these fun finishing features, you're really bringing back some old things like a farm sink and this hardware here. Talking about the farm sink, don't forget to play around with the color. We have this blue here and my personal favorite, the Piccadilly yellow. It really makes an accent in the home. When we come to faucets, this new color is really coming back on an older style. So you have a little bit of wow and accent and add a little technology to it. You have these touch faucets to make your life quite a bit easier. We're adding a lot of fun touches with this crystal knob here. And don't forget about all this other hardware that you have. You have some great pulls and all sorts of finishes. And don't forget your finishes don't need to match. So make sure you have a lot of fun with some oil rub bronze and even that antique brass that's coming back. You can even do some really fun things like finding some fork and spoon type of hardware to put her all around your kitchen. One of my favorite architects is still Frank Lloyd Wright. And I heard you built this Frank Lloyd Wright Lego set. Yeah, it's the uh, Imperial Hotel, the one that he built in Japan that withstood all those earthquakes. Sure. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about solving the empty box syndrome in a room. And a lot of people have a room called a dining room, a den, and it might be just white or beige and not done much. We can take a room like we did here, turn it into a library. Now, what did you do for bookshelves? Well, here we actually have a uh, furniture piece. So this all, all got brought in after we were done with this room. But another option that you can do is we can do built-ins where our trimmers actually build you a customizable uh, bookshelf that you can really you know, design your spaces how you want them. Sure. Now here's a really good tip. What you can do, instead of doing something like a walnut, if you like that rich color, you could actually take a poplar wood, stain it similar to what we've done here. It's just as nice. It looks just as pretty, but it's a lot savings, or it's a big savings on cost. Yeah, now how much do you said cost? About how much could they expect for a built-in for one of our trimmers? Okay, so let's say some bookshelves like we have on this mm -hmm. wall, it can be anywhere from two to three thousand dollars, let's say. Yeah. But also there's another fun thing we can do is what about the ceiling? Yeah, the ceiling, that's one of my favorite things. In this room here, we actually have what's called a coffered ceiling. Okay. And it really changes the dynamic of this room. A coffered ceiling is basically creating grids. So you have beams running both directions of the room, kind of giving you a checkerboard pattern. Now here you did something really fun. You put a lot of crown molding or trim inside those boxes. Yeah, and it really gives it a good look because there's a lot of different shadow lines that catch your eye. Uh, you could also simplify it and we can actually build the same thing out of uh, just drywall. Sure, and cost-wise for drywall you can expect maybe to pay around oh, $1,500. 
For the wood beams we have up here, really deluxe, maybe three to four thousand dollars. Yeah, but it definitely changes the room. It gives so that ceiling a good look. Yeah, there's a lot of things you can do with these rooms. Now here's another idea. I like the one that we did with that concrete ceiling. We put that leaded glass in. Remember? Yeah, that looked really sharp with the backlighting. Oh yeah, absolutely. Kayla, I got a few more ideas for you. Okay, very good. We've got the nice pattern style with right, that, and work. then white with a little metallic That's in there. That's pretty nice. You know, there are so many options when it comes to mosaics and backsplashes. You know, this is one of those finishing features that really changes the entire look of the bathroom or the kitchen and that's gonna be your backsplash. Exactly, and like Tony was saying, don't forget to put it somewhere even besides a kitchen. You have your bathroom backsplashes and you have your bathroom showers where all of these pieces can go into it and have mm. some fun. So what we have back here, we have some glass, we have some marble, all sorts of different patterns and styles. Is there anything that's not in style anymore when it comes to a backsplash? Not really, I can tell you what the trend is and the trend definitely is bringing that old new again and doing some subway tile and going a little bit more simple. So we have a lot of different pieces here. Instead of just white though, play around with the color. Or if you do white, do a colored mortar. That really plays up the differences and gives a little bit of pop and character. Now, what you can also do to dress the subway up a little bit is to add the mosaic in the subway. So what we're doing right now is a lot of mixing of materials. We're not just doing mosaic and we're not just doing subway. We're trying to mix a little bit and even throwing in some metal accents in there too. So really nothing is out of style. But if this isn't your cup of tea, go a little bit more traditional and do some natural mosaics and some natural stones. Travertine and limestone and some slate products are all really popular right now and it really depends on what's right for your home. There's so many different options. I've been really surprised lately at how much different dimension there is exactly. in the new styles. It's really crazy. You have some of these that are like a basket weave and what's great about this, you don't even have to do mortars so a lot less cleaning and maintenance to think about. And we have this here, the Baroque patterns. So have fun with color and have fun with patterns and be a little bold. Now, one thing I did want you to show me over here is how they're kind of doing an imprintation. Okay, we have this there, yep. One way to change up the look in your home is paint. You can take one wall and make that an accent wall. So it could be in your great room, you could take a children's bedroom, pick something really bold, adds a lot of interest, and it's easy to change. So if you decide down the road you don't like that color or maybe it was too bold, you can change that up. Yeah, it's easy and quick to do. Now you mentioned doing it on a wall. Is there anywhere else you could maybe use a bold color? Well, you could use this on some interior doors. You could do all of your interior doors a different color. You may like a blue or something different like that or maybe just a pantry door or a laundry room. You may have a bright color sink like we do at the Next Step Home, that yellow sink. Mm -hmm. You could do a yellow door to go with that. Yeah, and now the, there's actually a paint that is an odor eating paint. So you could put that maybe in a kitchen, pantry, or any other room that you think that you need to have that odor eating. That's a great idea. Let's hey, pick out yeah. some colors. I really like this one, right? You do? I'm sure that's your favorite. You know, bathrooms are another room in the house where you have a lot of options to pick from when it comes to finishing touches. Let's talk about some of those options. Lonnie. Yeah, Lonnie, there's a lot of special things you can do in there. For example, right here we have a vessel sink. These are really popular, especially in a half bath. It really is a decorative feature, also functional. So for about $500, you can do something like, like this with I the like faucet. That. Uh huh. Pretty cool. And then I'm, I noticed down here on this particular vanity that's open down here, and we've got Baskets? We do. Baskets are really popular. Uh -huh. And again, this is almost like a piece of furniture and really decorative. So again, great in a half bath or a main bath. And by well. changing the color of your towels, you can do all kinds of things, can't you? You sure can. You'll also notice this vanity is a little bit higher. Right. All of our vanities are higher. That is 36 standard. 36 inches, 32, 33 inches up to 36 inches makes a world of difference mm -hmm. for, especially people like me that don't want to bend over too far when I'm shaving and brushing my teeth. Exactly. And then this is another great feature. This is a countertop cabinet linen. Uh-huh. Yeah. So again, yeah. it's decorative. Also, it's very functional. Everything's right here. So you lose a little bit of your cabinet space here for decoration, but you gain it right okay. here. And I also know that around mirrors now, the surround around the mirror, we're using what we call mirror mates, I think? These are mirror mates. And this is a very 
very inexpensive way to really add something to your it's bathroom. It's a frame, right? It's it just a frame. frames out the mirror. Yeah, yeah. and they, they're custom, so they come in any size. You just measure your mirror. These are about two to $500 you know, per bathroom. It makes a big difference in that Huge bathroom. difference. And you can see this, too. This is another decorative mirror, so you can use metals as well. All kinds of options. Hey, by the way, we have that special sink just around the corner. Let's take a look at that. Okay. Did, did you roll these towels? What? What's wrong with them? I'll show you when we're done, but there's a right way to do this. We'll come Re back to the towels. Really? The towels? Yes, I have to do them uh, all at home. I'm pro, I promise. Oh my gosh. Well, speaking of what the towels are actually in, the Etagers and open shelving is really popular right now. Even in a bathroom, it brings a lot of accent and a lot of different spice to that room. Yeah, and it seems like a lot of the folks that are doing that open shelving are also getting away from the traditional fiberglass tubs, the one-piece units, and doing these great standalone tubs. I'm telling you, I've done so many of these fiberglass standalone tubs lately. It's a lot less expensive than a true cast iron tub, yeah. but you have the freestanding, you could do a sleek modern look like this here, and you even have the traditional looks that have a little bit more embossing to it, or the claw foot underneath, which really dresses up and creates a nice pop. And when they're making those choices, they really need to consider the faucets as well. There's a couple different ways they can do those, right? Yes, yeah, speaking of finishing touches, that faucet, very important where it goes. You could do one on the deck, or you could do a floor mounted one. It's a little more expensive that way, but it can create a nice little accent. I think a lot of folks are getting into those showers too, doing these open showers. What, what's the big trend with those right now? You know, I love the open showers with all of the glass, and I love it when the built-in garden tubs have a deck that go all the way to that shower, and that actually is used as the seat as well. We've done that a couple times, and it's such an impressive look when you walk into that bathroom. It creates that nice focal point. Yeah, they're opening those showers up with a lot more glass too to kind of match the open shelving. Exactly. All these finishes touches make a real big difference in your bathroom, and especially these rolled up towels. I better go learn how to do Look, we spent a lot of the show talking about finishing features that you can do on the inside of them. But there's a lot of things you can do the exterior of a home to really dress it up and make the home your own. Yeah, and relatively inexpensive stuff mm -hmm. that really makes it pop from that curb, curb appeal. Yeah, exactly. So one of the things we've got here is a vinyl shake product. A lot of times you'll see those in the gable, so the peaks behind us. You can do these in all types of different colors and patterns. You can really make the home pop with this. Yeah, it's kind of like we talked about accent walls on the inside. It gives it a little bit of accent to the outside. And you mentioned it goes in the gables. That's where those two roof lines create a triangle up there. Now, there's some other things we can do in those gables. What are some other examples? Yeah, well, see, a lot of times we'll do some gable struts in there. So you can do those painted. You can do a nice cedar or a stain strut, depending on the rest of the features you have on the exterior of the home. Yeah, and you can get a few different designs with those. You can also do gable brackets, where those are evenly spaced as that, that uh, gable runs up to the peak. And a lot of folks are doing some different things with windows now. They're really adding some accent around the windows and trim with different colors and sizes. Yeah, size is a little bit wider, gives it a little bit more definition. They also will put vinyl shutters around it too, which can really change the uh, from craftsman to traditional based on just the shutter selection alone. Yeah, and as you mentioned, a lot of these items are pretty inexpensive and it's things that our viewers at home can do in a heartbeat. Yeah, well, hey, why don't we pick out a few for the, this house behind us? Yeah, and, and I can't believe they're let us pick this up. I don't know what it is, but for some reason, they always put us together to talk about doors. We do. I don't know what it is either, but I love talking about doors. And then this time, we're actually going to expand it beyond doors and talk about the front entrance and what you can do to play up a few fun features in your front entrance. So what what is your number one recommendation to make your front door kind of stand out a little bit more? I would definitely say it has to be not even just the front door itself, but what you put around the front door. And I really think flanking the front door with some potted plants with a little bit of color and accent makes a huge difference. You know, one of my favorites is actually taking brick pavers down the side of the concrete to kind of just dress it up a little bit more. Exactly. And if you have a few steps to your front door and you need some railing, do some wrought iron railing. It really draws attention to it, and it's not just the typical white. It, there's a lot of different accents that you could do with that, and you can change this top part up for your style of home. Another thing that we're seeing more and more people doing is actually doing a stamped concrete for the whole front porch on the way up. Exactly. We, you know, we get a lot of um, looks like the stamped wood look, and you actually have this deck or rustic look coming up to the front door, which is wonderful. So really what you're saying, everything is in style. Everything is in style, and we talked about all the things around the front door, but don't forget about the front door itself. It's very, very important. One of my favorite things to do with the front door is actually just change out your normal height and make it into an eight-foot door. 
that really makes a difference, especially you have a taller ceiling height on the inside. I love adding transoms or those side lights down the side, even with a little bit of lead glass in it too. One of my favorite things, because I'm always the guy who they call to move furniture, is actually doing the double door. That way you can get those sofas and everything in and out of there, no problems at all. And it makes it look very stately. You now all these things really help with the front entrance of your home. Don't forget to think about these up front for your final finishes. Now, Kayla, the wrought iron, where exactly did you want me to try to put this? Um, let's try to put it right over there, kind of like it back. Right, right over here. Kayla, I think I found the perfect rod here. That's a really good one. Now, be careful before you make a decision. There's so many options. Have you seen them all yet? I have been walking around Choice Designs for a while now. We're talking about finishing touches on homes. Window covering is a big part of that. And I got to be honest with you, as a guy, I am completely overwhelmed. You know, that's the great thing about Choice Designs. There is a professional here to help you and to make sure we get the right ones. Um, there's so many options out there, but a lot of options really are taken care of just by the samples we have here. Now, there's been a lot of talk lately about window coverings and technology. What are some of the latest advancements? Now we're talking that window treatments are the finishing touches of the home, which is very true, but it's something you might want to think about a little bit more up front, especially for the electrical. You know, doing the technology is very important with window blinds. We're getting taller and wider. It's a lot harder to reach, so people want to be able to have those operational either with a remote control or with your iPad. And it's something to think about. Pre-wiring is probably the best case scenario for these blinds. It will make them last longer and usually work better. But if you do forget about it, or if you have a remodel situation, a lot of, most of these options actually come with battery as well. We do a lot of building in the country. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of building in woods, forests, lake houses, where there's no one behind you. Do I even have to worry about window coverings then? You know, in some instances, you might not want to. You don't want to take away from those gorgeous views, but you might want something that just softens up the room. So you, you might not need a blind necessarily, but maybe doing some shades on the sides, some drapes, or just some valances on top, just to bring a little bit of softness and a little bit of ambiance to the room. So it's a little bit more about the texture. It definitely is about the texture. There are so many fabric choices out there now that are some really awesome options and there's a professional here again to help you with those thousands of options to really narrow it down what's best for you. Another thing that I hear about from a lot of my clients and something that you know I've worried about myself is the expense of these. Does it have to be expensive? It definitely does not have to be expensive. Again like we're talking about maybe just blind the the key rooms the bedrooms and leave your great rooms for a couple years down the road until you're ready for that next step and there's definitely levels that we have here as well. You have very affordable to very luxurious depending on your style and what you're looking for in your window treatment. Now one thing that I wanted to ask you about is something like these shutters. What do you think about this one? Kayla, you know, everyone talks to me about their new home and they always want to have that one thing, that one thing that just pops for them. What is a great way to do that these days? You know, I think a lot of people forget how far wallpaper has really come over the years. A lot of people still think it's that traditional pattern that they're still taking out of their homes now, but wallpaper has come such a long way. I mean, things like this here where it looks like a brick wall, or you have this here that looks like a rustic wood wall, and you don't have the mess, and it's just a little bit of wallpaper, and you could do a whole room or just an accent. You know, there's great things like this. We also even have things called, it's mica chips, this glitter and the little chips that stand out in this. It might be expensive, but for that one thing that pops, it is a showstopper that people will not forget in your home. Now, where would you put this? You could put this in a foyer wall. You could do it around your fireplace, just that one wall in your great room that everybody sees. There are so many different options. You can even do some natural things like um, some straws, and there are just so many amazing options in wallpaper now. And don't forget, I know it might be a little weird. Things are still coming back, but you have murals as wallpaper. If you don't oh, want to wow. spend for that artist to come in, but you really want that that showpiece again probably in a foyer or your main living area you have something like this here it might be a large floral print but it is definitely coming back and making a showpiece now you know me I'm non-committal <laughs> and so something like this the big mural pieces scares me 
we have other options. We do, and that's where JFA, Jennifer Ford Art, comes into play. So if you're a little bit scared of something like wallpaper, you don't want to have to worry about replacing it after a couple years if you don't like it, you might want to consider artwork. You might like the artwork over time, but want to move it in different spots. And that's where we have JFA, and they have so many great options here. So you can find that signature piece that you can put over the fireplace or on the main wall when people walk in. The foyer, I'm seeing more and more great art. And the beautiful thing, about finishing touches that is something that you can actually change with the seasons. You can. It, it's very personal to you. So whether it's wallpaper or whether it's art, there's a lot of different local artists that come in and display their art. And we also have some other pieces as well around the showroom to fit anybody's needs. Speaking of which, I saw a new piece. Can I get your opinion on okay, it? Okay, let's go take a look. I really think that we might want to do that one. Kayla, we've talked about finishing pieces for the house, the, the jewelry for the home, as they say. We've been talking about a lot of the things in there, but if you don't have your furniture right, it just doesn't come together. It's very true. You know, furniture is one of those things that you want to have the right pieces and you want to have the right style, and that's where we come into play. What are the newest things that you're seeing? I'm seeing a lot of like the the restoration rustic kind of look going on when it comes to the furniture now. What are you seeing? Definitely seeing a lot of that, seeing some things that are a little bit more modern to kind of follow that IKEA sort of look. But we have a lot of rustic pieces. People are really making a lot of their own furniture as well just to try to use up and reuse, which is a lot of fun. But we have so many great options here to check out at Choice Designs. The one thing that I'm, I know you're probably sick of hearing me say, but nothing is really out of style if you put it together correctly. Exactly. You know, I'm very much a fan of eclectic and so you can do a lot of different things. There's a lot of important things to consider. Your dining room or your nook table, you want to get the right size, then rooms are getting larger. You want to fill up those spaces with the right sort of pieces or vice versa. If you have a little bit of a smaller space because you didn't need it like your last home, you want to make sure you're probably not putting the same furniture that might have been oversized sofas in it and getting something a little bit more minimalistic. And the matchy matchy doesn't necessarily have to be the thing anymore? You don't have to match anything really as long as you go with the style that you prefer. You can have a great simple sofa with a really fun leopard print chair if you want. And the one thing that I really enjoy is going out to Choice Designs because they have so many unique pieces that you could put in with any piece of furniture or furniture around your home and that'll just make it pop then. You know the great thing about being out at the Choice Design showroom is it's different every time you come and every time you come you'll probably see something you didn't before and there are so many options out there. You know don't forget about accessories they're very important especially with all these built-ins that we're doing you know you really want to finish off those built-ins with some great pieces and some accents not just candles but some really great fun sort of um, accessories. And the one thing that I've notice that you do that is really fun I think is you, we may have a house that's a spec or a model for a few months mm -hmm. but you'll actually change out those accessories every once in a while make the house look completely different. Exactly you really want to freshen up your design every so often to make sure it doesn't get boring on you and that you have a little bit of change and that'll keep you happier in your home as well. One thing I got to show you you know I have to always show you something but I was really curious about this chair right here. I bet you I can skip this rock seven times. Do it. Ooh. Oh, I bet you I can skip mine at least more than that. Oh, oh no. maybe not. <laughs> well, we just got done talking about all of the interior finishing features for your home, but don't forget about the exterior. We just put this wonderful pond in and it adds a little bit of spice to the outside. You could do a water feature like this, or you could do one with a sculpture that has a little bit of water too. Also, I love pavilions, like with cathedral ceilings and beams and special lighting. Really excited. Yeah, Lonnie, underneath those covered areas, I love them doing something great with concrete. You can do colored concrete, stamp, get all kinds of patterns, maybe even do some decking underneath there. Absolutely. You know, we haven't been able to show you all the fun features that we have, so we'd encourage everybody to give us a call anytime you'd like to hear a little bit more about some of the fun things we've done. So, JR, you want to give us a close? Yeah, we'd like to thank you guys again for spending part of your day with us. And also, as always, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about who we are, what we do, and why we do what we do so well, please just pick up the phone, give us a call, visit the website below. Even better yet, come in the front door. We'd love to show you some amazing finishing features to your home. Uh, Luke, let's all skip one. We all get a chance. Lonnie, yeah, you want to try one? Let's do this big one back here. Ooh, Ooh that was nice. Nice. nice job.